Hi everybody, today we're gonna make a cocktail with prickly pears. If that's not enough of a hook to get you in, I don't know what is. I don't know, I don't know what I can do for you anymore. For those of you who may not be in Central or South Texas or really anywhere in the world where these exist, you may not know exactly what a prickly pear is. It is pretty much the fruit on a cactus. When you see those cactus that have the flowers, they turn into this really beautiful purple fruit. Our cousin's family has a ranch down in South Texas and they went out there and they just foraged for these things. And I showed up at the house and there's this bag of prickly pears sitting on the doorstep. And I, what do I do with that? Uh, I don't know. I didn't want to make a syrup because there's no way I could use that much syrup before it went bad. So I went with my old standby and made a shrub because I love shrubs. I ended up with this great prickly pear shrub. Uh, I'll put the recipe up on the website at thisdoesn'tsuck.tv so you can look it up and see how to make it once I post this video. Uh, long story short, it's a pain. The prickly pears have thorns on them and they also have these tiny little hairs that will get stuck in you and hurt and you don't want them in your beverage because you don't want to drink them. They can get stuck in your teeth and then you, you just don't want to do that. So they're kind of a pain to prepare. Once you get them though, they're great. They have this great flavor. I liken it to kind of like watermelon and a red fruit of some sort. I think cherry comes to mind a lot, but long story short, it's a great flavor and we're gonna play with it and make a cocktail. For the shrub, I usually use it like a simple syrup, but I don't wanna lose the flavor of the prickly pear. So there's a real balance in how little is too little, how much is too much, and also what liquors will go with it. The one I settled on that I think is gonna go really well with this is just a general London dry. I've got this Broker's London Dry Gin. I'm going to put an ounce and a half of this Broker's London Dry Gin in here. One ounce and a half. Now this prickly pear shrub is very syrupy. It's got that consistency and I don't want that to overpower anything. And it's also got a pretty strong flavor, so I don't want it to be too overpowering. We're just going to put in a quarter ounce of this prickly pear syrup. Whoop. Look at that color though. That is a nice color, y'all. That is, that's pretty. So we were trying to think of something to really complement this that would really feel kind of like it came from the area and we dove into the Amico Amaro that's from Revolution Spirits here in Austin. This Amico Amaro is great. It's got notes of cedar in it and it's a really nice complement to a prickly pear that grows in the area. So we're gonna put, again, not a lot, quarter ounce. Quarter ounce. Amico Amaro. We're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna use Cardamaro. Just pick this up. I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, this is kind of like a wine-based Amaro. So in a lot of ways, it's really similar to a sweet red vermouth. This one, just so you know, it is not a cardamom Amaro. It's actually, like I said, wine-based, and it uses cardoon, which is a relative of artichoke. So I'm gonna use this just like I would a vermouth because really, it's a red wine base, it's got those herbs that are gonna give you that vermouthy kind of texture. And I'm gonna put half an ounce of this in. Stir until well chilled. I say that a lot. I don't think I'm ever gonna say stir until ah, it's warm. The dilution is really important in this because of the syrupy nature of that prickly pear shrub. I wanna make sure that I get that dilution so that I have a good mouthfeel and texture. I don't want it to be too syrupy. Once that is nice and well chilled, we are going to strain that into a coupe. Let's see what that looks like. It's gonna look just like this, but it'll be in a coupe, but you know, whatever. Oh, it's pretty, hey. I wanna add a couple of other things in here. I'm gonna add a little tonic as well. Just a little bit of tonic water, a splash if you will, just on top. It's gonna to give it a little bit of a bubbly character. And I'm also going to get a little bit of lemon and I'm going to express the oils of that lemon across the top of it. That's really gonna help brighten things up. I need to sharpen my peeler, man, it's a little dull. Anyway, let's just go squish on that. Boop, see what it tastes like, huh? That's nice. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, that's nice. That's like an entry level Negroni. It has the characteristics of Negroni, but it's sweet enough so that someone who's not used to a bitter drink like that can really dive into it. That's really good. The prickly pear is there. You do get it on the back end. You also get that wonderful Cardamaro. That, it's really nice. Can I just not shoot any more videos and just go drink this for a while? Cause I'm into it. Let's talk names for this one, huh? Because y'all need to know how it got named. 
During our live stream, uh, at some point, Sophia, who was the guest that day, pointed out that we had a really cool cat bowl down here. And I had to tell the story about how we got that cat bowl at the Ernest Hemingway house in Key West. And that bowl is designed for Ernest Hemingway's cats, who are all polydactyls. If you don't know what a polydactyl cat is, they got six toes, at least six toes. They could have more than that. Anyway, long story short, we decided to call this the polydactyl. Why? Because there are six ingredients. How did that happen? Kismet, synchronicity. There's a better word. I kind of know what that one means. There you have it, the polydactyl, another awesome recipe that we made on our live stream that you should join us in. We do that once a month. You should totally join us in the live stream. You can chat, make suggestions on things to add, as well as make suggestions for names. You should totally be there on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash weirdlings once a month. Do the test kitchen, join us. Now, if you like this recipe and you wanna see more like it and learn more about making cocktails at home, you should totally click down there and subscribe and click the little notification bell so you get notifications for whenever new videos come out. You should also just kinda click right over there because YouTube thinks that you're gonna like some of these videos. I think you'll like them too. They're more of these. So if you like this, you should totally watch those. Don't forget to like this video and share with all your friends. Bring your family over. Let's keep making stuff that doesn't suck together.